Hi guys, this video is on sharpening, obviously, from the title. Um, so, two main ways of sharpening. So, what I'm going to go through is using a honing guide, which is this thing there. It's kind of attached to the underneath of your blade. Um, and then just sharpening by hand, as in kind of just holding it kind of like this. This is the, this is the way I kind of, I sharpen for the most part, but I'll go through the two, essentially. Um, I won't go through, I mean, you know, I'll discuss it, but I'm not going to go into great detail about the sharpening system that I use. I have made a separate video. I'll try and put a link up here or link in description for that. Um, essentially, it is the, well, some people call it the scary sharp kind of system. It's the micro finishing film, micro lapping film, and it has got a sticky back and it is stuck. It's an abrasive paper, different grits, and it's stuck to glass. So. And I, I stick them to kind of A4-ish kind of size bits of glass, and I do have it kind of double-sided. double, double -sided. So I have lots of different kind of grits on here. Right, so why would you choose between kind of a honing guide or just sharpening by hand? Well, for the most part, when I use a honing guide, I use a honing guide for very thin things where the kind of blade is quite thin here. It is harder for you to hold on to. It kind of wobbles around a little bit. Um, and the other one is for very small chisels. This one is a, uh, well, I'll show you a picture of this one, the make of it anyway, if you are interested. This one here, because this is such a tiny little chisel, that how on earth can you kind of hold this steady and keep it at the correct angle? And sometimes a small little one like this works really well for small chisels, clearly. You know, this does work for that, but this one kind of works a little bit better because you can kind of, not say tip it, but it, it just works a little bit better. It's not the best brand. The Lee Nielsen one is quite a good one for that one. But like I said, I don't kind of um, use them that often, but they are useful, of course. And I have discussed kind of in my previous video, uh, grinding, whether you grind at 25 degrees, 30 degrees. And again, I'd say, look at that one if you are kind of curious of the different angles. Um, in this one here, I'm going to be sharpening. I mean, I won't probably sharpen this one completely. I'll just sh show you kind of like uh, the sequence of how I sharpen this way and the sequence of I sharpen that way. Um, but this one, I won't necessarily be using this blade, but I want to discuss it. The reason why I sharpen like this, and I'll just show you now, and I won't go through all of it because it just to save a bit of time. So essentially, this is the bevel part here. Yeah, that's the bevel. And you want, and I call this bit, that part of the bevel, I call it the heel. I like heel on a shoe. So it is bevel down, kind of like that. And this is why with these big, thick blades, this is my blade for my plane that I've made. It's uh, yeah, a blade for the plane that I have made. It's about five millimeters thick, kind of something like that. So a nice thick blade. So I go heel down kind of like that, and then I push it down. And then it's just kind of finger here, index finger here, index finger here, heel down, yeah, like so. And then I just go kind of backwards and forwards. And it is resting on the two peaks there and there, because this is a hollow ground blade at, well, I don't do this one at 30 degrees, I do it at 35 degrees or thereabouts, but we'll get into that some other video. So I do it heel down like that, tip down, and then I just go kind of like this, forwards and backwards, and I try and, if you look at how I'm moving, I kind of, this is staying still, I'm not pivoting kind of like this, I'm not doing this kind of weird side to side action, I'm locking in, and then I either bend my knee and go backwards and forwards, like so, yeah, I do that kind of multiple times. So I find that quite a quick way to do it because this is a nice thick blade. It has a huge distance between kind of here and here. So it's quite an easy thing to do. I sometimes will pull this kind of back like so, but sometimes it judders when it's doing that. I tend to do that sometimes with finer grits. These two are kind of the coarser ones. So I'm just kind of getting rid of material by doing it this way, it's nice and efficient. That's why I do it this way. And what you'll do is you'll do that for a bit and you'll feel for a burr. This kind of a bit of material that's been kind of folded over that side and you get a burr there. Do not run your thumb that way, run it forward over the top and you'll feel a piece of metal essentially. So what you wanna do now, so once you feel that burr, you want to get rid of the burr there's a couple of ways of doing it. I won't do it on this one. I'm going to do it on 
this one. So this is the, actually no, it's the nine micron I'm gonna do it on. Let's flip it over. I need to take that burr off the back. So you wanna lay your blade down flat. This isn't always what, you can't always do this because if you have a chisel, then you can't lay that down. A chisel, you'd have to do it kind of off the side, kind of like this, because you don't wanna kind of, the absolute worst thing you could possibly do is kind of hold this blade up like so to take the burr off the back. This, and I have gone through this in another video, the importance of this being flat and have a look at that one as well, that this needs to be perfectly flat. So now we need to take the burr off the back. You could do it like this, and this is the way I'm gonna do it. Lay it down flat like that. Lots of pressure here. And just do a little bit back like so. And then do not drag it off like this. You can come off the side kind of here like that. Another way you can do it sometimes is this way around drop it down like so, and just do just a few passes. Doesn't really need to be much, and then flip it over like this, or flip it over like that, but again, being careful not to cut yourself on this bit, of course. Then you should have, uh, have I got my rag? I haven't got it. So, well, you just get dirty hands, doesn't matter. Then you tend, then see if your burr has disappeared. If it hasn't disappeared, well then probably the underside of this is not flat. And if it's not flat, and again, I did cover this in a video, but just as a quick tip, if this isn't flat, then this is a Sharpie, like a magic marker. Get the Sharpie along the edge like so, draw it on there, and then see if it is flat by doing this. Yeah, lay that down. Yeah, do a few passes, not a huge amount. And I wouldn't do it on the like super, super coarse one. Yeah, make sure you pop it back up and then have a look. Yeah, you can see it's just fading out kind of there, but you know what I mean? It's got rid of it quite quickly. That's where you want, you know, it's flat. If you did it and it was not there at all, well, you can't get your blade flat at all. So going back to it, you do that on your, not say your coarsest grit, but something like that. You do it on, let's say that was the 15 micron and now I'm going, and then take the burr off. Yeah, got rid of the burr. And now you go to the nine micron and repeat the process. Yeah, same thing. Heel down, that like so. Backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Yeah, I don't tend to put any kind of cutting liquid or anything like that. You could put water, there are other things you can put on this. I don't tend to do that. Just because I, again, time thing, I'm just quickly doing it. And then do a few passes and feel if you feel a burr, you'll feel a piece of metal that's been kind of pushed up kind of there. Yeah. All right, feel the burr now. Now I'm finished with that one and I could look at it to see what it looks like, but it's not really about the look, it's about feeling for the burr. You do a certain grit and you feel for the burr. Yeah, then you move on. So I've finished with the, the nine micron, I'm now on the five micron. Let me get, there's my rag. I want to clean this so you haven't got any kind of random abrasive grit or anything like that, so you're not going to scratch the underside. So now I want to take the burr off the back. A few passes backwards. Yeah, lift that up to get rid of it. Check that my burr has gone. So hopefully my burr has disappeared now, which it has. Yeah, then continue. And this is a, a finer one. I think this is five micron. So every, every time you go to a finer one, it takes more time to push a burr over because it's obviously finer. Yeah, so this will take a little bit more time. Yeah, and this is um, why I call it sticky backed. This is called PSA backed. So that's what it means. Like when you buy it from, um, in the UK, we buy it from a company called Workshop Heaven. And in the States, I'm not 100% sure. You guys will just have to have a look. I don't know whether it's Japan Woodwork or something like that, but there will be lots of different companies out there. And we buy them as kind of A4 sheets, and then we kind of cut them up for the school, but it does depend on what you want to do. So time on this, again, feeling for the burr on there. Then flip it over, drop it like so. And then this is the one I just do because the further you go, the finer the grit, 
then the burr is not as coarse. So with this one here, when I take the burr off, I just want to put, get it where it's on the kind of glass here, bit of pressure, and then just a little bit, pull back a tiny bit. Yeah, then make sure very carefully, kind of picking the thing up like so. And then what I do to check it, and you'll be able to see in this other camera, I tend to have my finger. Normally, you don't run your finger along the side, but you do. I run my finger along, and I try and see if it will kind of, if it will kind of hook on my skin. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Like, you could, and I've seen with people in videos, because it it, it's a visual thing, so people kind of go, oh, wow, that's amazingly sharp. You know what I mean? They'll cut kind of paper and stuff. This isn't that sharp kind of yet, because I haven't used the burnishing paper yet. And this is only five micron. It's not kind of super, super fine. But you know what I mean? They're kind of slicing it through there. But that's all well and good. I, know, I can kind of tell this isn't that sharp because I can feel my finger. It's just grabbing on this kind of side bit, but it's not. And this is a blade that I have used before as well. But let me see. So I can feel it's not that sharp. So what I want to do, this stuff, it's, um, it's a leather strop, so this is leather. It's the kind of shiny side of leather. That's what's kind of stuck onto here. And I have got this iron, iron oxide kind of paste. So that's what I've got. That's what that kind of, what reddish kind of paste is on there. So whenever you're finished sharpening on that, generally I go higher than that, but that's okay. But now, this has got sandpaper on the back of it. That gets kind of, so it's got a little bit of grip to it. So now you're going to kind of put that down here and then you have to go back in this direction. So it depends on how many passes you want to do. And it's, I try and keep this as flat. I don't tip this up. I try and keep this flat down as well. And what this does is just, just polishes it up a, a little bit. Yeah, you've got to really lock your arms off here. You don't want to kind of swing up kind of like this. You don't want to dome the top of your blade. Which, you know, we'd take a lot on this, to be fair, because this is very fine. Yeah, and you won't feel for a burr on this. Flip it over. Yeah, take that back like so. And then just feel. Yeah, it's not bad. It's so, okay, it's sharper here than it is, it is okay there, and it's not as sharp kind of there. Let's just check, just again, see. This paper's not so good anyway, really thin. <laughs> not a great example, but I can tell it's not that sharp either. It's, it's kind of, I'll go through the, like, the reason for it, but what I'll do is I'll quickly kind of, I'm going to switch to that one, and then I'm just going to, um, yeah, do a different method. Right, so, honing guide. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute why this isn't quite as sharp as it could have been. And, and yes, and why you, I did feel a burr, and this is a quite a common occurrence where, because this has been used before, it's had a certain amount of damage to it, and I haven't fixed the damage, even though I kind of feel a burr on the back of it. It's not quite as sharp as it could be, but I'll explain that in a second. So, because, yeah, and again, there's two different ways of sharpening. There's sharpening kind of from, which blade is it? It's, it's this blade and that blade. So there's two blades. There's two different methods of uh, types of sharpening, let's call it that way, that you're going to be sharpening like this one. This one, the, it had been used before. So this one had two or three kind of sharpens out of it and, and the edge had been eroded very slightly. So I'd had to, I've sharpened it and that's why it's not quite as sharp as a fresh grind. A fresh grind is where you have just come off of this, a bench grinder, or that, a wet grinder. That is a fresh grind, and you have got rid of all of the damage on it. With that one, I probably got that really dull, and when I sharpened it, I haven't got rid of all of the damage that has been done through planing timber. So that's one of the things. I'll do a little kind of drawing in a minute just to kind of explain it. So this one here, 
because it's a thin blade, I'm going to use a honing guide. And it's, it's sometimes a bit faster, sometimes not. It does depend on your method, really. Um, all right, let's get that. Actually, what one do I want to use? I want to use the 15 like before. The only difference here is that because this is locked into this kind of jig, this honing guide jig, that you can't take it off and take the burr off every single time. So with this one here, I've already preset this angle and there's, there's like, you, I'll show you a picture now, there's a, like stop blocks and stuff like that that are predetermined, the length between here and there, so that distance between here and here predetermines what angle that this is going to be at. So you have these kind of stop blocks that I haven't got one because I don't use it that regularly and I don't always stick to those perfect kind of angles. You can, of course, you've got a stop block on the same blade. Well, they're quite useful and I think very cheap. Well, you can make them yourself as well. Lots of videos out there on those, but they're pretty easy. So you just kind of lock this in up against your stop block and away you go. So I can see the advantage of these, but like I said, for thick blades like that, I don't tend to use them. Um, right. So with this one here, it depends that, so you can sometimes go backwards and forwards, but sometimes it can dig in, so you can just do backwards. And what you're trying to do with, not say both of these, but it's, to, it's the particular method that I use, when you're trying to sharpen this, or when I am sharpening kind of by hand, when I'm sharpening like this, I'm pushing down here and here. I'm not pushing down in the middle, yeah, because you can't get much grip. But also, the fact that I'm pushing down here and here, I kind of push this down there, and then this blade becomes a tiny bit domed. It's not perfectly flat, it becomes kind of domed. And I'll get into this when we start, when I make the kind of breadboard, the breadboard kind of project, which is coming up. Or if you're watching this, you know, and it's been out for a while, then I'll already made it and look out for that video. Link up here, perhaps. Um, so when I'm kind of sharpening this and I, yeah, the way I want it, I want this to be a tiny bit domed. I do not want this flat and I certainly do not want it like curved the opposite way. Clearly it wouldn't work, but this will become more apparent later when I start hand planing and setting this one up. Yeah, and you'll understand it a bit more, a bit more clearly anyway. So when you're doing this one here, that sometimes that you are putting pressure on the two sides rather than don't push right in the middle because then you will get this kind of curve like that and it's going to be a disaster. You will not be able to plane any timber like that. Whereas if you've got this slight dome in it, I'm not saying it's huge, but it's a slight dome in it, that's preferable when you're hand planing. So with this one here, again, you've already preset your angle. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, so I know also because this is kind of, that this is kind of, if I show you this picture, oops, let's get it right. So how, what, how this is set up, that it's got your kind of primary bevel here at 25 degrees and it's got secondary one here. So when I'm sharpening this one, I'm not sharpening at kind of 30 degrees, I'm sharpening it just the, just the tip of it at 30 degrees. So that's what I've got kind of going on here. And this is the most common way of sharpening that you will kind of set it up on a honing guide with your stop block and you're going to have this set at 30, you know, set at 30 degrees. Yeah, and you're only ever touching the kind of tip part as well, which can be quite quick, but you can't take the burr off in between because you can't lay this down flat, of course, and this would be a bit risky doing that and trying to take the burr off as well. So you tend to not take the burr off until you disassemble this. So you do, the stills do the same like process that you go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, feel for your burr. Yeah, I can feel a burr now, but you can't take that off, if that makes sense. Yeah, now I'll flip it over and I'll do the, the nine. Yeah, this is more of a visual thing. You'll kind of look at the thing. <sighs> yeah, just to see, it won't be shiny just yet because the nine micron isn't polishing it. It will be the, the five here. And the five is a, doesn't seem like a big leap, but five is a lot, is a lot, lot finer. 
and I have got a finer one. I don't know if it's on this one, back of that one. No, that's a coarse one. But this will be fine enough. All right, and this one, because it's a little bit old, this one as well, it will take a little bit more work. Definitely see it's way more shiny, a bit hard to see in the camera, I guess, but yes, yeah, it's, it's way more polished, you know, more like a mirrored edge. Yeah. And then again, of course, you're going to feel a burr because you've been doing, you know, because you've been doing it. Now you can take this off. Yeah, because you've gone through, gone through that. Now I want to take the burr off the back of it. Make sure this is clean. Because you don't want to have like a bit of metal swarf or grit and then do that and then scratch the end of your blade. And I'm going to be a little bit more, see, I'll try it like a little bit because I don't want to do push, because you don't want to do this. What you don't want to do is do loads on that side. You're going to push a burr back the other way. It's really what you don't want to do. So I'm going to try giving it a little bit of pressure. Yeah, a little bit back flip it over or kind of tip it off the end. Do not drag it off like that. And I'm just gonna feel it. Feels pretty good. Yeah, just feeling it kind of hook. Again, it's just way faster. You can't always just test with bits of paper. And the proof's in the pudding later when you start planing bits of wood. And I really know, I've been doing this for long enough that I know when things are sharp, just by very delicately rubbing it and going this way. Feels pretty good. But again, it will be sharpened up on, on that one. Or polished, let's say. Just a little bit more. Right, and this one I don't tend to, you don't have to keep it in the kind of honing guy. Clearly you have to take it out at some point that, that then it's, you, yeah, you get the idea. So this one, this one's more of a judgment call because it's such a thin thing. Again, just you clearly can't go back, you know, backwards and forwards. This is just a backwards kind of pass. And this is more about muscle memory, really. Can you see I'm kind of locking in and moving my whole body back as opposed to my arms. My body is not staying still and I'm going up like that because you're forced to. Your body is kind of, you know, locking your kind of arms out here and then just move your, move your whole body back. That seems to be a lot more consistent. Yeah, then over a little bit back like so. Flip it over. Now I will do the paper test because this one feels a hell of a lot sharper than that one. Steel's, you know, very kind of similar. That's better. Yeah, so it's way better. And I'll do a quick drawing of explaining why that is, why that one and that one are sharpened exactly the same. So it's actually, you know, it was a, an accident that it happened. It could have been, you know, could have like done the paper exactly the same, but actually it kind of proves the point that, that I try and hammer into the students multiple times. When you do, when you sharpen from a fresh grind, well, it is different from the second sharpen and the third sharpen or how many times, however, however many times you sharpen after that, that they're not always the same. Fresh grind, you're starting from zero. You've got rid of all the damage. Second sharpen, you potentially damage your blade and you need to get rid of that. I'm not saying you have to grind it every single time before you sharpen, but you've got to, want, got to understand there's a difference. So let's get rid of that. So what is happening? So if you kind of have a look at this drawing, so there's the tip of your, and I'll, I'll exaggerate this, I'll draw this kind of slightly bigger. So this is what's happened on, you know, that blade. But let's just, I won't change it because mine's slightly different, but when you do use your blade, your planing timber, well, of course it gets dull. Anyone who's ever planed anything, your blade, of course, doesn't stay sharp forever. It gets dull. What happens to it is it erodes 
the end. The end, and I, I'll over exaggerate this for just so you guys can see, the end becomes kind of domed over. Yeah, it rounds over through abrasion. The wood is abrasive. Different woods, are, you know, have different kind of characteristics, but you get my idea, you know, get the point. So what happens is it erodes and it becomes polished, the edge, because erosion gets shiny. So if you ever think that your blade is dull, have a look at it kind of like this and stare at the end of it. And if you can see a shiny tip along the edge of it, when you're looking at the underside of the blade, I call that the top of the blade where the bevel is, that's the underside because that's the flat side. Yeah, and that's the underside of the blade. That's the top bit. Well, of course that bit's shiny, but on the underside, you shouldn't see any shiny bits. So you'll see this shiny bit here. And what happened with this blade and why it wasn't sharp enough, even though I went through all of it and I still felt the burr, is because when I sharpened this one, I removed like this. Yeah, I removed that amount of material from it, but I still had a tiny bit of the polished bit like left over. So there's a tiny bit of polishing bit, polished bit there that I didn't remove, but I could maybe have seen it, although it'd be very, very subtle, but I could kind of feel that. I felt that it's sharper kind of here and there, but not quite in the middle. Well, through me with experience, I know that I haven't sharpened that correctly. I would just go straight back to the 30 and do it again and go through the whole motions again and then check it again. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, now that's improving because what I wanna do, I wanna get rid of this little bit here. I need to remove all of that, yeah? I need to remove all of that, let's draw it again. I need to draw, get rid of all of that so I'm back to a point. That's what you have to do for the second sharpen, the third sharpen, and then when this begets, when this 30 bit becomes too big, yeah, when this 30 is almost the same as that, that's when it's time to go back to the grinder and re-grind your 25 degrees. Yeah, get rid of that, go back to your 25 degrees and then have your small bevel here. Yeah, that's the sequence of, you know, sequence of events essentially. So that's what you need to do. You need to go kind of go back because otherwise you can't, you can't just keep sharpening kind of forever, essentially. So I hope that makes sense. So this blade, that blade's not quite sharp. That one is, so that's kind of, which one is it? Sorry, it's that one. So that's the blade I'm going to set up in my plane and that will be the next video. Um, again, I hope this has been helpful. I know I haven't gone really crazy into it, but there's a hell of a lot of people out there making sharpening videos and everyone has their own little take on this as well. So um, yeah, if it has been helpful, and this is gonna be a sequence of the plain thing, if you're interested, kind of carry on watching those or watch some of my other videos. Um, like, subscribe, uh, comment, always kind of comment, it really does help out. And um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching anyway. See you next time.